Square roots, woo! <laughs> Woohoo! Love square roots. Thank you, Mr. Hoff. Way better too. than way because better than round roots. I have to tell you that most of my students run screaming with square roots. There's something that's very tricky about square roots. I, I find that to be the case too. Absolutely. So I just wanted to quickly go through simplifying square roots, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. We'll see if we can make this as painless as possible. What I like to do before I even do anything. What do you like to do? Is just list out my perfect squares. Yeah, I do the same thing. See? I do. Right, like here we go. one squared. I like always start with that. Squared. One. Two squared. Four. Three squared. Uh, nine. I have to think about that one. Sixteen uh, is four squared. All right. Twenty-five. Am I going too quick? Thirty-six. No. Seven squared. Forty-nine. You keep going? Oh my god, oh, that's a lot of them. There. Oh, how? I think you could probably go forever. I think I can. All right. But seriously, make yourself a list, stick it on the top of your piece of paper, just have that because whenever you're going to be simplifying these things, you're going to be looking for a perfect square mm. that you can take mm. out of another perfect It does help having them listed. It yeah. really does. All right. All right, here's my first example. Let's simplify the square root of 50. All right, if I were to slap that guy into a calculator. Oh, ooh, we're like seven point something. I yeah, can't do that in my head. Yeah, a huge, long, irrational number, right? So I'm not particularly interested in that here. If I ask you to simplify, I want it in exact form, but I want you to see if there are any perfect squares that are living in the heart of 50. So let's look at the list. I like looking from big to small and boom. Oh, yeah. There's sure. the 25. 25 times 2 is 50. Okay. Hey, isn't that a perfect square? It is. There it is. What is the square root of 25? 5. And it comes out of the square root. Some of you guys like leaving that inside the square root, but it comes out. It's liberated because it is a perfect square. That poor little square root of 2. There's He's locked in that square root. Yeah. He's locked. You're right, Mr. Stewart. That's the most common mistake. Sometimes yeah. students take the square root and leave it in that square root. We right. Don't do that. Yeah. You can't do that. Absolutely. It's out of there. All right. So now, I started with that because adding and subtracting, we have to do lots of simplifying. Now, if I had something straightforward like, I don't know, something like this, 3 square root of 7 plus 2 square root of 7, hey, that's just like 3x plus 2x. What's 3x plus 2x, Mr. I think that's 5x. 5x. Same thing here. These are like terms, so I can combine these. 3 root 7 plus 2 root 7. 5 root 7. 5 root 7. And if you wanted to check that, I could grab my handy dandy calculator, put 3 times the square root of 7 plus 2 times the square root of 7. You're going to get some really gross irrational number. I really shouldn't say that they're gross, but you're going to have a decimal that goes on and on forever. If you put 5 times the square root of 7 in your calculator, you're going to get exactly the same amount. These are equivalent, but that's just simplifying. So where am I going with this? Well, what if I wanted to, for example, say the square root of 50 plus 7 times the square root of 2? Pause there. Hmm. Hey, are those like terms? They're not. They're not. So I can combine them. That's like x plus 7y. They're not like terms. However, I think I can simplify that square root of 50. And if you'll just walk with me over here, we already simplified the square root of 50, did we not? We did. So, hey, I can simplify that square root of 50 and know that's 5 times the square root of 2 plus 7 times the square root of 2. Hey, are those now like terms? They are. So I can just combine 5 square root of 2 plus 7 square root of 2 gives me my 12 square root of 2. Hmm, so that square root of 2 doesn't, it's not like 12 square root of 4 or anything, it's just they don't change, right? It's just like adding 3x and 2x, as you said, is 5x. You got it. Got it. All right. And later when we get into factoring, I can even Prove that to oh, all right. guys out there in our viewing audience. This would be the same for subtracting too, of course. Adding and subtracting, you need to find like terms. All right? I got it. Let's move on to multiplying and dividing. Multiplying and dividing, most people find a little easier. So 
So for example, if I want to multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 7, well, heck, and again, I can prove this to you later too. Isn't that just the square root of 3 times 7? I think it is. I think it is. And isn't that just the square root of 21? I think you're right. So, of course, whenever you do this, you want to look at your answer and make sure it's in simplest form. Is there any perfect square on my list here that is a Goes factor of nope. 21? So I'm done. That was lovely. How nice was that? That was pretty darn nice, right? Loved it. How about if I have something like the square root of 2? Let's make it a little more complicated. 5 times the square root of 2 times 3 times the square root of 8. All right, well, really, isn't that just 5 times the square root of 2 times 3 times the square root of 8? It's a whole group of things multiplied together. So you don't have to write it in a different order. But what is that property that means that you can multiply things in any order that you want? Isn't that commutative property? Yeah, so sometimes I think about it like this. The 5 multiplies nicely with the 3 to give me a 15. Are you with me so far? I'm with you. Square root of 2 multiplies nicely with that square root of 8 to give me the square root of 16. Oh, am I done? Uh, not quite. Why not, Mr. Haas? I think one of your perfect squares goes into 16 there. And in fact, it is a perfect square. Heck, I can just take the square root of 16. What is that square root of 16? I think that's 4. It is. So that is entirely liberated from the square root because it itself is a perfect square. Now, you don't like write it like it's not the square root of 4? No, it's not the square you know, root of Sometimes four. my students do that. I know. It's very tempting. So once you take that square root, it is out of there. It's out of there. Even, the even of though it's just I, four. I could take the square root of 4. That's 2, but that's, that's right, but no good. That's right, but there's no square root on it. Ah, if you I gotcha. stick the square root of 16 in your calculator, it's 4. It's 4. It's a value of 4, not a value of 2. And now I can just multiply those two together. And there we go. That's not too bad. That isn't too bad. Should we try dividing? Sure. Dividing, of course, is kind of like multiplying. Those are both square roots. What do you think I can do, Mr. Haas? I think that's the same thing as big square root over, uh, rather, 20, yeah, 20 over 5 underneath it. You know what I meant. I knew what you meant. Big square root, you know, goes around the whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I like 20 divided by 5, square root of 4, square root of 4. Hey, that's on my perfect square list. It is. 2. It's really not too bad once you do enough of this practice. All right, let's do one more. Uh, let's see, negative 100 times the square root of 48 over 5 times the square root of 2. Oh my goodness. Oh that man. Fancy. Mm, yeah. So again, it's just a negative 100 times square root of 48, 5 times the square root of 2. I can divide things that divide nicely. What divides nicely with a negative 100 is that 5. Negative 20, if I'm doing that correctly. Yeah, looks good. What divides nicely with that 48? The 2. 48 divided by 2, 24, if I did my calculations correctly. Looks good. Now, am I done, or can mm, I simplify? I think one of your perfect squares goes into 24 there. I think so. Now, it itself is not a perfect square, so I'm going to have something left over in my square root. But once you shriek when I get to my perfect square, that's going to work. Uh, I'm supposed to shriek? Yes. Yeah, now. Okay, ah. good. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so 4 clearly works. And let's see. I guess I have a 6 left behind. Well, I can take the square root of 4, so I do take the square root of 4. That gives me my 2. This poor little square root of 6 is left behind in the square root. And then I just clean up. And again, you can always check to make sure these work with your calculator. If ever you want to check them, you can put your original expression into your calculator and make sure that you get what you think you should get. You could even put this bear into your calculator. Be careful with parentheses. Yes, I was going to say, yes, be yeah. very careful. 
and you'll get some irrational number, but it should be exactly the same irrational you get when you plug this in. Looks good, Miss Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Haas. I feel the earth.